Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and today I wanted to do a little roundup post of the books I read in 2021. For my video that I made last year, I believe that I went through, or maybe the year before, I believe I went through every single book I read and gave a little short review. I've read a lot more this year, so we're going to change the format slightly. So let's begin. Also, I'm still working on like a little post that should hopefully be my favourite books 2021, because I found a few like all time favourites this year but we're gonna get on to that. Reading wise this year has been very exciting. It's been my most ambitious reading year to date. I've fallen in love with the works of so many new authors. And again, I've been making the most of my local library's app for eBooks. This year has also been pretty tough. It's been um, an all time low for my physical and mental health. And again, fallen a bit out of love with writing as much as I want this book to be published soon. And that's hard because writing is the one thing I love for a huge proportion of my life. Also this year such because Covid, the sequel, again, <laughs> we can't forget about that. But this video isn't going to focus on all the negatives of the year, it's going to focus on all the good books that I've read and how I suddenly need to buy a new bookshelf because again, I have filled my fourth one. So we're going to start off with some reading stats. My reading goal for the year started at 52 books. It's the goal that I've set for myself for the past few years because reading one book a week is pretty manageable with my life commitments and also the length of my reads varies a lot. Whether due to quarantines and lockdowns and a very sparse university schedule, I hit that goal very quickly, I think in March, April time. So I decided to increase it to 100 books, which is even higher than my highest reading years. I think I managed to read 70 books last year, but I was very bored and very optimistic. So in total, I had 105 books read. That was 36,756 pages for an average of, I think, 350 or 351 pages. My shortest book was 18 pages, which was ta The Tailor, the Grisha short story. And the longest was Winter at 833 pages, which is... Is it the final book in the Lunar Chronicles or is it the second to last? Either way, a very long book. I was also looking through my other Goodreads stats the other day and I found that graph that shows you your books over time. I wish I could change it to just books this year so I could give like a very nice graph. But we're going to do a quick breakdown of how many books I read each month this year. So we start with a strong in January with 15 books and that's where so many of my favourite books came from this year. It's... I don't have the entire pile here, but like these, so many favourites came out in January, even if they weren't ones that made my like final top 10 books of the year list. So many good books in January. February was 12, March was 15, April was 11. There were also a lot of new favourites this month. I think I was reading the Lunar Chronicles around this time. May was 12, June was nine july was only three so you can tell that i started moving back to university around this time august was seven september was four and i think they were all um uni related books as well october was 10 november was five books which is exactly the same as last year which is like fun coincidence and december was eight books so if we're looking at categories let's look at star ratings i'm someone who usually feels awful about giving books low ratings and we'll give one star books two stars instead but i tried to avoid that this year i also decided that i should start just accepting that i can did not finish books that i don't like instead of giving them lower ratings on bad reviews because they're simply not for me i'm also someone who finishes reading like averagely good or good but not great books and instantly go yes very good five stars and has to actually read the reviews just to process my thoughts because usually other people are a lot better at writing my thoughts than I am to decide if that book is actually five stars or not. And even looking through my Goodreads shelves now I can recognise that there are books that were incredible in the moment but the rating has probably gone down slightly as time has passed and I try to fix that so we can have as accurate a chart as possible. This year I gave out a lot more three star ratings than I have in the past so I try to be not really harsher but more critical and actually thinking about what I'm reading and rate books on story arcs and character development and other aspects instead of just my enjoyment and vibes. So this year we for five stars we had 13.5% of my reads, four stars was 26.9%, three stars was 36.5% so pretty much exactly a third of my reads. 
two stars was 21.2% and one star was 1.9%, which I believe was three books. I also made a list to help keep track of the formats of the books that I read this year, because that's not something that I've done in past years. I have the shelves on my Goodreads so I can sort by format, but I haven't actually included that or take that into consideration for my final stats. So I wasn't surprised to see that about half of my reads were borrowed from my local library because I got back into using my library cards like full commitment the past few years to make the most of their overdrive app and the is it Libby overdrive app just so I can have infinite book options while I was away at uni. So as you can see from this list pretty much half are library ebook or library physical which I think were mostly hardbacks actually. About a quarter were my own paperbacks and the other quarter is just made up of like hardback, my own ebook, audiobook, advanced reader copies. Also, there's a lot of audiobooks on YouTube and Spotify, which I'm not quite sure if they're legal. I reread Song of Achilles on audiobook and I'm pretty sure I was not meant to. I'm very sorry. So on to the best and the worst books of the year. I'm trying to do a more detailed blog post and a video as well on my favourite and least favourite, probably more favourite books of the year, so I'm going to keep this section very short and sweet. These are all books that I did read this year, but I'm pretty sure maybe none of them, except maybe one, were actually published this year. I would also like to add that these are, I say best, but they mean my subjective favourite books of the year. They may not be the best. I recognise that there are other books this year that were probably better, but I loved these the most, and they're the ones that stuck with me. First we have Teeth by Hannah Moskovitz, which I originally read on my library app and then had to get a physical copy because like, look, look at her. I went into this with no expectations other than like a very glowing review from Paper Fury, who I blindly trust everything they say. It was incredible. I reviewed it on both the blog and on this channel. So hopefully there's a link to my review playlist for my 2021 videos somewhere. The next was Small Favours by Erin A. Craig. This again I read on my library app and then had to get a physical copy. It's a very floppy paperback in case you're interested. Also the hardback version with the end papers, fucking beautiful, beautiful, stunning. It was almost a tie between this and House of Salt and Sorrows which I also loved but this one ran ahead because this is a little Rumpelstiltskin retelling and it completely stole my heart. And the final book is something I don't have a physical copy of, but again, read originally on my library app, and that is A Little Life, which you may have heard of by now. This is a book that kept me up at night whenever I like put it down to sleep, and has been on my mind ever since. It's beautiful and tragic and haunting. So we're going to have to take a very quick brief mention of um, the worst books of 2021, which are more like books I thought I'd love, but didn't. So there are three or four books which were my least favourite books of the year and they were all the third and final book in trilogies. For me it was A Vow So Bold and Deadly, Half Lost and The Toll. Also I would say The One from the Selection series but that wasn't a book I was expecting to love. It was just the first book I've ever given one star to. Again I thought I'd love them because I loved the other books in the series and I was obsessed with them. And there was so many great expectations and they just fell flat for me. Apart from the selection series, I wasn't expecting to go into that enjoying it. It was more like a fun, fluff, filler read. Like a quick read, you know, just to get my goal up. But I had a very interesting experience reading those because like, it, it took me back to the Wattpad days. And hopefully that was a short and sweet summary of the books I read this year. So thank you for watching. Please let me know in the comments, did you hit your reading goal this year? Like what were your favourite and least favourite books? And did you have any hidden gems or unexpected disappointments? Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Bye.